Okay. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. And today we are on a little journey. Uh, I decided to get out of the house and head to Earth 2 Comics. It's this really great comic store here in Los Angeles. There's actually two stores uh, here in Los Angeles. One in Sherman Oaks, and I, I can't remember the other one is. Uh, it's out in the valley even further though. And uh, it's re really great people that work here. And uh, Carr, I believe, is the, the manager and owner of, of the franchise of both stores. And he's been a great guy. I've known him for a couple years now. Um, back when I was trying to get you know awesome comics ordered he definitely ordered some books and uh, I used to live out in this area uh, out by Ventura like uh, you know on this like by the 405 and stuff in the 5 where like where they um, where are the 101 and the 405 where they meet and it's it's been a while since I've been out this way actually so I actually had to look up directions to get here uh, I was like oh man that's embarrassing I used to come here a lot so it, it'll be cool we're just gonna film a little bit of what we can you know obviously I don't want to get you know people people's privacy they don't want to be filmed there's gonna be a lot of people here they're doing a big uh, 15th anniversary sale here and they're gonna have like you know massive discounts on a bunch of stuff so I just thought I'd come here I have about 30 bucks to spend and I figured that would be enough to find at least a couple little Venom things, assuming they have anything Venom related here. And I'm also looking for a couple of Ghost Rider back issues. So, you know, I got my work cut out for me. 30 bucks doesn't seem like a lot, but with this sale, maybe we'll get some cool stuff. So let's get to it. So I am home now with my comic books. I actually did find a few things there. Uh, some things that were Ghost Rider related, some that were Scarlet Spider related, and then like one or two Venom things. So all in all, pretty good. And I only spent $22, so I actually came in under budget. So let's take a look at what I got real quick. Um, I picked up Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four by Christos Gage. And what was cool was I actually saw Christos Gage there, and I was like, oh, I could get him to sign it. And I actually went up jokingly, like, hey, would you sign this for me? But obviously I knew he was shopping. So he was like, oh, yeah, do you got a Sharpie? I'm like, no, I'm just kidding, man. Like, I'll run into you at some point and get it signed. I was like, you just, you know, enjoy your day off and shop, you know. Uh, but this is actually a really cool series that he did. He also did one called Spider-Man and the X-Men. And what happens in these is he basically looks at four decades of the characters. So each issue, it's a four issue miniseries inside here, uh, plus some reprints of like classic stuff uh, that he didn't write obviously, but the four issue miniseries that he wrote is like the first uh, issue is the beginning of Spider-Man when he first meets the Fantastic Four like around that era when he's like you know really young and then the second one is like when he's in the black costume uh, and so it's that decade and then the third one you know 80s and then like the third one is like the clone saga and then the fourth one is like modern day so it kind of goes through the decades of Spider-Man uh, and teaming up with these people including the time where he was a member of the Fantastic Four uh, with Ghost Rider, Hulk, and Wolverine uh, which would only happen for a couple issues which I own and love I love that time of them as a Fantastic for. So this is really cool. It's just like a history love letter to these characters and Christos Gage does a great great job at it and like I said I have to look for the X-Men one because there's some symbiote stuff in this one but there's also some symbiote stuff in the X-Men one with Mr. Sinister. It's really cool. So I have to track that down and we'll have to do episodes on them for sure. Uh, then I also picked up, speaking of the Fantastic Four, what if uh, the, the new Fantastic Four had remained a team. So What If is like this great book that I loved in the 80s and 90s that basically took like, all right, what happened if the if the story went this way instead of the way it went? And so it was these cool alter alternate realities. And this one was a really good one where the new Fantastic Four stayed the team because the Fantastic Four never came back. So Spider-Man and these guys decided to keep going for a while, at least until uh, they, you know, they, uh, they couldn't save the world and Doom had to come save them all. And then they disband after that. But it's still pretty good story um, more what if stuff what if starring Ghost Rider uh, so I picked that up and uh, there was one more oh yeah what if Barbara Ketch had become the Ghost Rider which actually isn't really a what if story I think they ended up doing this or a version of this at some point anyway so uh, this is cool to have though because it's like it's a what if story that actually came true and a funny thing is a lot of what if stories uh, eventually came true because people just started running out of ideas at a certain point um, now, speaking of Ghost Rider, I did get one other thing. Issue 50 of the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider run was only $3. And I actually remember reading this issue. I'm not a big Johnny Blaze fan. I like Dan Ketch more. Uh, but
but I'm not a total hater of Johnny Blaze, even though I like to rub salt in it sometimes. Uh, so, but this issue I remember reading when I was younger and really liking, where he's teaming up with Knight Rider here. So I was like, all right, I got to pick this up. Not Knight Rider the talking car, obviously, but like a ghost horseman. Uh, but so I had to pick that up for three dollars. That was too good of a deal. And then the rest I got uh, the issue where Scarlet Spider beats up Venom. Um, I had to have it. Even though I already own this issue, I was like, I don't care. I want an issue that is like crumpled that I can read, you know, just read for fun. I don't have to put in a bag and board because the other one I still have sealed. So I'm like, okay, I want this just to have to roll up in my pocket and read from time to time. So I picked that up and I picked up the story right after it, which I don't have anymore because I got rid of a lot of my Clone Saga stuff and switched to digital. So I don't have a ton of these in print anymore, but I wanted to pick this one up because it's Web of Life and it's uh, Spider-Man versus the Grim Hunter and Kane. This takes place after the Exile Return storyline, so I actually got all four parts, which is really cool. And I'm actually going to be doing a Kane collection at some point too, and we're going to talk a lot about him in the Scarlet Spider series, but I wanted like his first appearance, which I couldn't find there. It's issue 119 of Web of Spider-Man, so I'm going to keep looking for that. Uh, but I did pick up issue 60 where, where he reveals who he really is. And like I said, I'm going to save all that for our Scarlet Spider series. Uh, then I also picked up Spider-Man The Lost Years number one. These were all a dollar, by the way. Um, all these ones that aren't in bags and boards. And this is a really good story by J.M. Demetrius and uh, John Romita Jr. And it tells the the missing years of Scarlet Spider's life. And this is like the first, uh, you know, little bit of it. Uh, it's like a three-part miniseries, a four-part miniseries. But yeah, this is a really good one. More Kane stuff in there. I really dig it. Uh, then I also picked up Spider-Man The Parker Years number one. And this has some symbiote stuff in it, just for a couple pages where they like re-explain, you know, Spider-Man's life and how it led up to this moment where he realizes that he may be the actual clone and Ben may be the real Spider-Man. So I was like, all right, let's check that out and, and pick this up for a dollar. Uh, and then the last thing I got was this issue. Uh, this was in my collection for years and it must have gotten sold on accident or I don't know what happened to it but it's not there anymore. So I've been panicking for like the past year and looking for a copy that I didn't care about the condition because every time I saw this it would be like 50 bucks, sometimes 30, as low as 30 bucks or 20 bucks, but I just didn't have the money. So when I saw this for $5, even though it's banged up and has some dents on the side, I had to have it. This was the original death of Aunt May. And it's a real bummer that they retconned this because this happened in the middle of the Clone Saga. This was the reason Ben Riley came back to New York was so he could be with Aunt May before she passed away. And he couldn't even do that because he was with her and uh, he, like you know visiting her in the hospital after everyone else left. And uh, and he uh, he was like trying to you know um, like he trying to be with her. Uh, but obviously Peter kept showing up and there was some tension between the two of them. So Ben would have to leave. So Aunt May finally starts to feel better. And then uh, she gets taken out of the hospital, brought back to Peter's house, and then she ends up dying there peacefully in her bed. And Ben can't be with her. He's actually outside sitting on the roof crying as she dies. And it's a really heartbreaking moment. And I really thought they should have kept it in continuity because it, it, the gravity of it was so intense. And what they end up doing is later on retconning that Peter and Mary Jane even had a kid or, or they didn't retcon it, but they just had like the kid be a miscarriage. And they had like the Green Goblin had Aunt May, you know, like he had an actor player in her moment of death and then had the real Aunt May somewhere. It was so stupid. Uh, I really wish they would have just committed to this because I think, uh, you know, she had a, this was a good goodbye. It was a really well-written goodbye by J.M. Demetrius. So, so uh, or Demetrius, I'm sorry, I think I mispronounced his last name. So, I had to pick that up. So we'll talk about that during the Clone Saga a lot more too. And then the last thing is I did pop over a friend of mine um, named uh, uh, Genghis, at Genghis Conway on, uh, on Instagram. He's a big toy collector and loves Cyclops. He's a big X-Men Cyclops fan. And I posted pictures of my Daredevil and, uh, and who was it? Daredevil and Punisher Netflix figures. I posted a picture of those and I said, yeah, I think I might buy the, the rest of this line because it's really cool. I like Blade. I like Bullseye. I like Jessica Jones and Elektra. And he said, oh, I know where Jessica Jones and Elektra are. You should check out this Toys R Us. So I swung by there and sure as anything, they had them, which was pretty awesome. And so these were like buy one, get one, 40% off, something like that. So really good deal. They end up being like $16 each after taxes. So not bad at all. And since I had some... I had about $8 left over from 
the comic store, but then I was like, eh, I'll throw in a few extra bucks and just buy them just so I have them. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I picked these up. I thought that was awesome to end my day with a couple of toys. So yeah, all in all, pretty fun. I know not traditional, like straight Venom stuff, but I did get a couple symbiote things. Uh, the the Spider-Man and Fantastic Four series we'll definitely talk about, and I'll try to track down the X-Men one too, whether in print or digital, and reread that so we can do an episode on these two stories that Chris Gage had written. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of these books. Any of these do you have in your own personal collection? Any of these that you want me to talk more about? I think all of them will probably go over again, uh, minus one of the Ghost Rider issues, uh, the Knight Rider one. Probably won't talk about that in an episode, because most of my Ghost Rider series, which will launch probably closer to when the Venom movie comes out, because movie news will probably slow down by then, and between Venom movie coming out and the you know announcement of the sequel, uh, between that time, because you know, I'm assuming they might do a sequel, it, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, but there's going to be some downtime there, and we're only going to, you know, we'll have the movie out, I'll do my review, and then there'll be some downtime. So I figured that'll be a good time to launch the Ghost Rider series. So we'll build it up until then. Uh, so for now, we'll just stick with Ghost Rider, I mean, we'll stick with Venom, Spawn, and Scarlet Spider up until the release of the Venom movie. So yeah. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.